Apparently every WWE story in modern times have been garbage, or at least that's what the internet would have you believe anyway. If Vince McMahon's company is associated with anything, it instantly gets cast down in the sewers. If you disagree, a bunch of people are going to yell at you. Well, you can come and yell at me because I think over the last five years especially there's been some great narratives that have come out of world wrestling entertainment, some of which could even stand the test of time. There's a reason they're the number one gig in town and when everything comes together, they too can smash it out the park. I'm Simon from What Culture, and this is the 10 best WWE storylines of the last five years. But before we begin, let me tell you about today's list sponsors. That's right, we've got a sponsor for today's list. I've got to keep the avocados in my fridge stocked up. Alliance Heroes of the Spire. If you've got a hankering for RPG combat on the go, then Alliance is a great title to check out. With over 400 unique heroes to choose from, which can be combined in over 10,000 ways, PvP, guild battles, giant, giant boss encounters, Alliance Heroes of the Spire is packed with content. And if this tickles your fantasy helmet, then good news is if you download the game via my links below, you'll get a massive bonus of 50,000 gold and 50 gems right away, which can be used to buff your team and customize their moves. You're welcome. Anyway, enough shill from this girl. Let's take a look at that list. Number 10, Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are like the perfect wrestling couple. Even when things aren't going smoothly for them, when they do come together, boom, it's magic. And a 2016 angle between the pair proved this was most definitely true. A lot of this is because of their past as well. A prolific team at first and then enemies in Ring of Honor. NXT made great use of the duo when Owens joined his longtime buddy on the developmental brand. Zayn's quest for the NXT Heavyweight Championship culminates on the very same night KO debuted, resulting in a heel turn from the new man on campus and a surprise title win a couple of months later. Sami then got injured when Kinda debuted against John Cena. That worked, as when he returned at the 2016 Royal Rumble to eliminate Owens, Zayn triggered an exceptional series between the two that went on for months. Admittedly, labelling their battleground encounter as their final battle was stupid, that was clearly not the case. And surprise, surprise, the two were warring again on Raw before the end of the year, and then on SmackDown later still. We then, of course, got them coming together in late 2017, which should result in a Mania 34 clash, and let's face it, all of this has been awesome. Number 9, Daniel Bryan WWE never wanted the outcome that we all got at WrestleMania 30. While it was clearly what the fans wanted and once again would highlight an underdog performer actually managing to climb the mountain, as has been the case at Mania 10 and 20, this was no plan by WWE. Sort of just happened. A lot of what did take place wasn't even on the cards either. It was just the audience taking control and the company's attempts to stop this after SummerSlam 2013 all the way through to Survivor Series were pretty obvious, especially in hindsight. Every time the Shield beat him down or Randy Orton escaped with the WWE title, or the Big Show stole his gimmick, Vince McMahon and friends were genuinely trying to reduce his status. Like all great angles, however, everything started to blur the lines. Daniel vs. The Authority spun off into so many sub-stories that helped everybody else, other than Brian himself. So when he eventually rose above all that with championship at hand, it was just beautiful, wasn't it? We got the payoff we wanted, and really, that's all we ever needed. Number 8, AJ Styles vs John Cena No one could have predicted how successful AJ Styles would be when he arrived in the WWE, but my word, has he outdone everyone's expectations. The highlight of this journey so far surely has to be everything he did with John Cena. The phenomenal one has proved his worth to the organization in record time, bouncing back from a middling feud with Chris Jericho to propel Roman Reigns forward at Payback and Extreme Rules. With nowhere to go as a beaten babyface, he turned heel alongside Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson at Cena's expense, triggering a run of matches and angles between the pair that carried the summer for the company. They stole the show at SummerSlam thanks to a 23-minute stormer, and that not only saw Styles go over clean, but he also stole Cena's armband to wear hilariously around his head as SmackDown's new leader. He was given the ball. He ran with it too as he lifted the WWE title in September and retained it against Dean Ambrose and Cena himself after the latter came back. Cena's long-awaited and record-setting championship win over Styles at 2017's Raw Rumble fittingly ended their conflict in worthy fashion, and that scrap was genuinely excellent. They could go at it again too and I'd be alright with it, hence why I'm mentioning here. Brilliant. Number 7, Brock Lesnar becomes the Beast When Brock Lesnar returned to the WWE in 2012, he wasn't treated the right way. Losses to John Cena and Triple H all but pulled the rug out from under him until the company finally saw sense and stopped punishing him. By WrestleMania 30, most had considered The Undertaker's streak something too mythical to tinker with, especially as during this run he had done away with the likes of Shawn Michaels, CM Punk and the man with three H's. Lesnar was a good opponent, sure, but he was just there to take a three count. 
That intrinsically was why Brock's victory was so powerful though. Masterfully marketed by WWE in the years since, fans were frozen in shock and awe at the result. They even gasped when 21 and 1 appeared on the big screens in the arena. This was followed up perfectly during his SummerSlam 2014 squash over John Cena. Not only had the former MMA man conquered the streak, but he was so untouchable and unstoppable that Cena wasn't prepared for his biggest fight of the summer, got eaten alive. John deserves a lot of credit for how much he sold here because the sheer sight of Lesnar winning the title so easily just made him into the monster we still know today. Without that, it could have been a very different story and let's face it, who would Roman Reigns have to take down at WrestleMania 34? Repo Man? I think not. Number 6. Brock Lesnar becomes the chump Everything I just said went on for years too until one day Goldberg was interested in returning to the WWE. And then man, did we have some fun. Building off what happened at WrestleMania 20, the company put skits together between the two that were so wonderful, they got the whole wrestling world talking. It started when Goldberg smacked Lesnar up in less than two minutes at the Survivor Series, and they did the same when they came face to face in the Rumble. The simple idea that Bill had Brock's number was easy to buy into and surprised fans each and every time. When WrestleMania 33 rolled around, it was hard to figure out what could be done, but a sub five minute brawl proved to be one of the most entertaining in years and rehabbed Lesnar in seconds. Finally triumphing over his old nemesis, Brock has now held that title for a year and few remember the shock defeat in 2016. That is good booking, my friends. I won't hear it any other way. Number 5. Seth Rollins the Kingslayer WWE dropped the ball by bringing Seth Rollins back as a heel in 2016 after his long-term injury. Despite the fans all being behind him, management decided to just fall back into a pattern even though they'd seen success going the other way before, such as when Triple H returned after his quad injury in 2002. A rebellious babyface run later that year didn't do much to negate that, nor particularly was a forced friendship with Roman Reigns. An overdue WrestleMania clash with Hunter himself, though, finally afforded Rollins the opportunity to reconnect. For start as he admitted that he'd been a prick, which is always a good start. And from here, WWE blurred the lines between Triple H, the main roster character, and the developmental brand hero. It all worked and put Rollins on the mantle he needed to be, and the fact he beat the game at WrestleMania, even if the bout itself was a bit poor, revived Seth to where he should have been a year prior. If only they'd done that originally, eh? If only. Number 4. Miz Dell The Miz and Damian Sandow's run was not only as hilarious as it was brilliant, but it was also the latter's WWE highlight to hell, maybe even the former as well depending on your take. Miz's polished Hollywood persona didn't race out the blocks in 2014 as he was still suffering from everything that happened the years prior, all that stuff with John Cena and The Rock etc. However, Sandow's great comic timing elevated him over the hump, completely making the act worked and created gold in the process. A copycat stunt double, Miz Dell was genuinely funny at ringside, mirroring every everything his now boss did. The duo even scooped the tag team titles they became so popular, even though on paper, this shouldn't have worked. It was too ridiculous. It overachieved ultimately and that's when things started to collapse as it grew bigger than maybe WWE wanted it to. There was no real big turn for Miz Dow despite fans being desperate for it and all we really got was him beating the Miz up in the WrestleMania Battle Royale before being held back down the card. Lesson learned here, kids. Number 3. Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens Chris Jericho was ready to leave WWE yet again after feuds with AJ Styles and Dean Ambrose, but an unlikely alliance with Kevin Owens dramatically transformed the fortunes of both men. Incredible as a pair, Owens and Jericho were not only great in the ring, but amazing away from it as well, constantly being show highlights backstage as they kinda did whatever the hell they wanted to do. Tom Phillips was routinely the third man in their shtick and he reflected the world's bewilderment towards the pair, and the way Owens slowly became the heel and Jericho the face was wonderful. WWE just let it play out to depending on what felt right. This all became beyond amazing when Jericho put in one of the performances of his career during the Festival of Friendship, delivering a greatest hits package of the goofs and gags that reminded you why the two became so popular. The vicious attack on Y2J was heartbreaking, and while their Mania match wasn't quite what it could have been, all of this from start to finish was top notch, and maybe even Jericho's best WWE run to date. Number 2. The Shield Perhaps the single greatest created triumph for the WWE this decade, The Shield's birth, push, breakup and reunification all benefited from the company reverting to the most traditional methods of storytelling. In turn, it created true stars. Built quite simplistically as we were told they were better than everyone else and also unstoppable as a unit, Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns were united in a believable common cause that saw them win the US and tag team titles before serving as authority hitman from the summer of 2013 onwards. It got better as well because they then became babyfaces naturally as they feuded with the Wyatt family in early 2014. Super over with the fans, it all got ruined when Rollins turned his back and joined the authority as Triple H, Batista and Randy Orton were struggling to deal with the threesome. Even after all that, audiences were still happy to see them get back together in 2017, and we even had fun with the narrative that preceded it. Seth Rollins' redemption didn't sit well with Dean Ambrose, leading to much unease between the two before they finally made up and their official reunion with Reigns drew one of the loudest pops of the year. 
everyone was all in with this, and it was great. Number 1. The Rhodes Family Cody Rhodes has done incredible things for Ring of Honor and New Japan since leaving WWE in 2016, but it wasn't as though he hadn't proved his worth to the organization before all this. He's vastly underrated. Rhodes exhibited some unseen babyface fire when going against the authority in 2013 after daring to stick up for Daniel Bryan on an episode of Raw. Rhodes fell to Orton and it meant he got fired from the company. In storyline, that is, he didn't get fired for real. Gold Dusty's desperate attempts to win his brother's job back went the same way, as did Father Dusty when he was knocked out by a tearful Big Show. All three were then decimated by the Shield ahead of their last chance opportunity when they fought at Battleground 2013. The very good pay-per-view brawl did indeed earn them their jobs back, but a tag team title victory for the babyfaces eight days later was the peak of the angle. Victims of the Shield's numbers advantage without Dusty on the outside, Big Show emerged from nowhere to knock out Reigns, Rollins and Ambrose in a moment of true levity and happiness. More of this please WWE, it was lovely. <laughs> oh, 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 wasn't that something? Don't forget to like, share and subscribe below and also the people who made this lovely video, they're appearing right here. But if you're thinking to yourself, I want to see more content jewels, then why not look above my head, as there probably is some. I don't know. I can't see it. Until next time.